a mystery team has popped up in the Eastern Conference that is a potential suitor for Dame Lillard. We're going to talk about why that is probably not the Chicago Bulls, despite some Bulls fans' hopes. We're going to get to all that, plus more, right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today, and we're just going to talk about the Dame Lillard uh, situation. So, uh, recently in Bulls circles, if you guys are on Bulls Twitter, Bulls anything, like uh, uh, it came out from Mark Spears that a mystery team in the Eastern Conference has emerged as a suitor for Dame Lillard. And of course, all Bulls fans, not all, I won't say all, but a lot of Bulls fans uh, started asking, could that be them? Could that be the Chicago Bulls? Well, let's start off with the fact that Mark Spears sometimes just tweets things so he can get on shows and he can act like he has inside information and nothing comes of it. But outside of that, right, if any team in the East uh, I feel like is a mystery team that's popping up to suit Dame Lillard, it's probably going to be the New York Knicks just because of the amount of trade assets they do have having potentially up to four first-round picks in this year's draft, potentially no less, uh, that they can move for a case of Dame Lillard. As a matter of fact, the uh, New York Knicks will have multiple first-round picks for at least the next few years up until 2027. So keep that in mind when we talk about those type of things. But when it comes down to the Chicago Bulls, right, if they did want to get involved in the Dame Lillard sweepstakes, what would it realistically look like for the Chicago Bulls? Now keep in mind, right, And this is what I will say for Bulls fans that are being hopeful of the Bulls' chances of popping up into trade conversations for Dame Lillard is the fact that the Miami Heat don't have a lot to offer, right? The Miami Heat have, I think, one first-round pick they could trade outright. Other than that, it's a number of first-round pick uh, swaps that they can offer. And, of course, yeah, they have Nikola uh, Nikola Jovic uh, that they can include in there as a promising young player, a young player that I was really hopeful that the Bulls would have been able to draft, right? They have Nikola Jovic, who they could uh, be a nice young piece for them. They have, you know, Tyler Hero, who uh, helps match that contract, right? Uh, 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 Kyle Lowry as well, who's another big contract that they can use to try to match that. But ultimately, the Miami Heat aren't offering like this, this world beater package. And when we talked about this topic over on Locked on Bulls, one of the things that I did point out is the fact that We don't know really what Portland is trying to get, right? Portland, who owns most of their own first-round picks outright, uh, upcoming, right? Are they just trying to increase the value of their own first-round picks, right? Meaning, we don't. They don't really care about the value, the the number of the player value that they get back, right? In a Dame Lillard trade, which Nikola Jovic is a nice uh, young player to get back, but it's really about them getting more for opportunities at at first-round picks, so they can really try to build out this roster for the next wave of players that they have. Um, you know, with with the young players now, with Scoot Henderson um, being there and, you know, they got Shaden Sharp from last year and things like that. Right. Are they just trying to maybe increase their chances to get even more talent to help build out that young core? Because Portland Trailblazers are a team that have never really been a free agent destination. And for them to really get to a level of being able to, you know, even hope of being a team that has a chance to win the title, it would have to come via most of that team being built internally. Right. So. If the Portland Trailblazers are realistically just looking at it in the sense that let's get as many first round picks or opportunities as first round picks, you can match the salary. We're going to be a, a, a young team anyway, a young team that's probably not going to win. We're going to, you know, hopefully they're building the proper, you know, winning habits and stuff down there. But overall, you just don't know. But I like a lot of the young players on the Trailblazers roster. Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons is still a fairly young player down there. Shaden Sharp, you have as well. You have, you still have uh, you Chris Murray, who was the draft pick from this past year down there. Uh, Moses Brown, we'll see how he's he's end up used and stuff like that. You got Jabari Walker down there as well, right? So you got a lot of young players down there that the Portland Trailblazers could want to use this time to develop. And naturally, by the by the outlook of that, they will have a ton of first round picks around that area as well so that's what you're looking at when it comes down to it for the trailblazers now again in looking at it in in, in the sense of the bulls right and and what the bulls would potentially have to offer we don't have a lot we just don't have a lot um i would love to be able to say that the bulls have assets that they can easily try to go after a player like dame lillard but you know ultimately we don't 
And so when you look at the Chicago Bulls and what they would have to offer, be, meanwhile, as we talk about it, the Portland Trailblazers, um, yeah, Portland Trailblazers, other than the pick that they potentially owe to us, which is the next time they make the playoffs, which, again, may not happen, the Portland Trailblazers own their own first-round picks all the way until 2029. And they can't trade many of those, those first-round picks because of the protection on, that, they, that the Bulls have on their first-round pick up to 2028. So, you know, that's what you really, you know, you run into with them. Now, the Bulls, right? Of course, we have the expiring contract in DeMar DeRozan. But I would think that if you're adding Dame, maybe you want to try to add Dame to DeMar. But, you know, again, maybe not, right? Maybe you want to, you know, add, add Dame to Zach Levine, both players making over $40 million a year. But when you look at what they have to offer, let's say the Lonzo Ball contract, right? Let's just say, for example, that the, because the Portland Trailblazers aren't looking really at getting a player back, let's say they are willing to take on Lonzo Ball's contract, which has a, a additional year after the season remaining on it, which I highly doubt, even with how you know the idiotic protections on the Portland pick, that they'd be willing to do that. But you still got to come up with 20, more, 20 million more dollars. So DeMar DeRozan more than likely is going to be involved in that trade unless they look at involving multiple players like a, a Io DeSumo, Alice Cruz, all right, to get there. So the, the matching the salary that high with the contracts that we have, unless you're including DeMar DeRozan, it gets a little bit hard. Now, if you are including DeMar, which is he has a $28 million contract, at that point, you can include DeMar and Kobe potentially, and then that gets you close enough, right? You don't have to match it one for one, but that gets you close enough. Now, will the Bull, will the Portland Trail Blazers be willing to take that? It's going to have to come via more first-round picks, and as we know, the Chicago Bulls have their own first-round pick in 2024. We owe a first-round pick to the San Antonio Spurs in 2025. If that it's top 10 protected, if that does not convey in 2025, it goes on to 2026, which it becomes top eight protected. If it doesn't convey in 2026, it then convey, it goes to 2027, where it is once again top eight protected. If it doesn't convey then, it goes to 2028, where it's top uh, eight protected again. And at that point, we own our own first-round pick outright again in 2029. But again, more than likely, that Chicago Bulls pick I hope we're not bad enough to where it's it's top 10 this year. So more than likely, uh, the San Antonio Spurs are getting that pick in 2025, which means that the Bulls can trade their own pick in 2024. They can trade their own pick in 2027, right? And then they can offer pick swaps in 2025 and 2026, potentially, if it doesn't convey to the San Antonio Spurs. So that is what the Bulls are working with in a scenario like that to try to acquire Dame Lillard. And avoiding the luxury tax at that point, which we know this ownership group like, likes to do, becomes an even harder task when you have two players making over $40 million. Now, one could say, well, could the Bulls be interested in including Zach Levine in that type of deal? I guess considering the fact that they've listened to deals on Zach Levine, you could make that argument. But again, that type of disruption on the core for a player in Dame Lillard that is older, has had health problems on top of some other things, I don't necessarily see the Bulls getting involved in that type of talk, right? That's just what I always like to give it to you real. I know it'll be a nice clickbait type topic to say, hey, this is how the Bulls can get Dame Lillard. It's not happening. I don't see a realistic world in which it does happen, even though the Bulls do have some assets that could, could make it interesting for them at the trade deadline if they decide to look look around some things. But ultimately, it's not, it's, it's not going to happen, right? And you, like I said, you guys are going to get a lot of, you know, articles on on that and stuff from people that are trying to get clicks and Ultimately, I just want to be real with you guys on this one. The Chicago Bulls are not trading for Damian Lillard. It's not happening. Dame time will not be in Chicago. Unfortunately, we will stay uh, in central time, and that's just what it is. The Bulls will not get involved in that. And, you know, I don't think every Bulls fan is hopeful of that. Like, I know some people just want to see the Bulls make a move to say, to say that the Bulls make a move and make a swing for a star like Dame. You know, it, it, it would really reinvigorate the franchise as far as the excitement, especially from the casuals around it. But I don't know if it, if it gets back to it. Like, ultimately, when it comes down to Dame and it comes down to even if a surprise team does get involved, the, if it's the Eastern Conference, the team with the best bet that I would think is the New York Knicks. Right. You got to look at the Knicks in their in their situation. And I talked about this a little bit when I talked about the tier list in the Eastern Conference that the Knicks have contracts they can easily match almost any contract in the NBA right you have uh, RJ Barrett who you can absolutely move for example right RJ Barrett who has a 23 million dollar contract which they can look to move right um but then are you pairing Jalen Brunson with a Dame Lillard which is then another small backcourt which Dame has basically been in his whole NBA career you have the Julius Randle of it all right with his 25 million dollar contract Evan Fournier is getting 18.5 million dollars which you know shout out to Evan Fournier for getting paid but you also have, you know, 
contracts that you can move like an Isaiah Hardenstein, right? Stuff like that that you can combine, that Knicks can combine contracts to get to the $40 million needed to trade for Dame Lillard fairly easily, right? And then when you look at the number of picks that they can offer in a, in a trade, like I said, the New York Knicks having their own first-round picks outright, outright, free and clear in 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 28, and 29. That is the next five drafts the New York Knicks have their own first-round pick, which they can outright trade. On top of that, over the next handful of years, they also have first-round picks coming from Dallas, Detroit, Washington, Milwaukee potentially as well. That And so the Knicks have, if draft capital is what the Portland Trailblazers are, are really the most interested in, the New York Knicks, as a surprise team in the Eastern Conference, have more than enough of that, right? And, I've, and, and that's why I think that if a team, and especially as star-craved as the New York Knicks are, if a team, surprise team in the East is going to pop up and get in that Dame Lillard talk, it's going to be the New York Knicks. I bet I would bet my money on it. I'm not betting my money on the, him going to the Knicks, but I'm saying if any surprise team pops up with the best offer, that surprise team more than likely for me is going to be the New York Knicks. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to work out for them, of course, right? That's not what I'm saying by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think that that is the, the type of team that would get involved in something like that, right? You guys can let me know what you guys think on that down below. Now, one of the players that did sign that some Bulls fans are still holding out hope that we could waive Carly Jones, we're going to talk about two free agents before we go, is Kelly Oubre Jr., who signed a one-year deal with the Philadelphia 76ers. He averaged over 20 points per game last uh, year on tons of shots, right? But it looks like he's joining the Philadelphia 76ers, I think, on the veteran minimum contract, right? And the reason why I think this deal works for the Portland, I mean, for the, uh, talking so much about Portland, for the Philadelphia 76ers is that whatever happens with James Harden, right, they can offer Kelly Oubre a role off the bench where he can come in and just be him, right, no matter what happens with James Harden. And I think that that kind of works out. He's going to go to a team that's expected to be one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. It's a one-year deal, so he can absolutely kind of rehab his value out on the free agent market if he does go back on that next year, right? He's not a perfect player by any stretch of the imagination, but at the end of the day, I do think that they got a player that can absolutely fill it up from the bench albeit high volume, right? But, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Now, as it happens with any Bulls fan in any offseason, um, once a free agent that the, that fans think the Bulls should have went after, they like to think, oh, well, the Bulls missed out again. We didn't miss out on Kelly Oubre Jr. I look at, uh, like, uh, um, Kobe White and his role that he can bring be uh, coming off the bench is much higher than what Kelly Oubre could bring because he he's a two-way player, right? Yes, he has not averaged 20 points per game at any point in his career, and I understand that. But I, I, I really like that. Now, I know that Kelly Oubre Jr. can stretch the floor some. The Bulls being uh, one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the league last season, that theoretically you could have saw some things happen with that. And at a vet minimum, I wouldn't have been mad if they brought in Kelly Oubre Jr. I definitely would play him over Carly Jones. But ultimately, I think the Bulls' rotation is kind of set. And I think that you know, the Bulls aren't really looking. Now, one thing that they could look to do at, if they do move on from Carly Jones and decide to non-guarantee his deal, which they have, I believe, until the 16th of October to do so, right around a month still to make that decision. Nerlens Noel was recently waived. And a lot of Bulls fans look at Nerlens Noel and they have said, oh, well, this is a guy who can absolutely protect the rim. And while he has had seasons of averaging close, or well, some over and close to two blocks per game, right, that Nerlens Noel as an end of the bench piece, which is what he would be, much like I say with anybody, if you're giving him the veteran minimum, you can do a lot worse, right? Now, I know a lot of people are going to look at that and say you're going to waive potentially the G League MVP to bring in a, a center that is aging and has not played a lot of minutes in his last three years in the NBA. No, that's why it's most than likely not coming. And I think that, well, you know, as Bulls fans, we look a lot at what players could potentially bring. We don't look at the fit. Now, could the Bulls use more size? Yes, absolutely. I do think that if Julian Phillips defensively is what he was he was made out to be in that draft, I think that they're going to play Julian Phillips at small ball center some if he cracks the rotation for the Chicago Bulls. But, you know, if they do decide to do something to bring in a player like a New Orleans Noel, like I said, it's the end of the bench role. I really couldn't be too mad at it. But, you know, I guess we'll see. I don't expect it to happen. I kind of think that this Bulls roster is primarily set, at least going into training camp. And the Bulls may look to see what's well, how this team looks in training camp before they make a decision on something. Keep in mind, even when Carly Jones's contract does go guaranteed, it's still only a partial guarantee. Only a small portion of that contract is guaranteed, so they could still waive him and then bring in somebody else. So, you know, we'll end up seeing what happens with the Bulls in that case. But 
that's my time for today, guys. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.